to acknowledge the presence of the Lord and we want to share together what we have been sharing uh, for a number of programs concerning my friend, the Holy Spirit. And uh, for this particular program, I'm going to talk about being uh, honest before the Holy Spirit. Many times we are not very honest. We defend ourselves instead of acknowledging and accepting that we are not right. But let us pray before we start. Father, we thank you. We want to bless you. We thank you for the work you are doing in our lives, even by your Holy Spirit. And we pray, O oh God, that we shall be a people that are changed. And, and now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. So we, we, we continue. Uh, with uh, the heading, honest, uh, being honest before the Holy Spirit. Honesty in God is a major issue. Honesty on any level of the Holy Spirit, whatever, intimidates your enemies. If you are very honest, your enemies are intimidated. One of the many things your enemy fears about your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the potential of your transparency when you are in his presence. What you be, who you become. What you become. And you can only be in, that pres in, the, in the presence of the Holy Spirit or in the presence of God when you are honest with, with yourself. Not when you are defending yourself. Many times we are so used to defending ourselves. I used to do boxing. And for you to win in boxing, you, sh you should know how to defend yourself. Because it sh every punch should not get you from your enemy. So either you defend yourself or you duck. So we learn defending ourselves from childhood. Because we love ourselves. So, whereas that is important, what matters more is not the defense in the presence of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit already knows you inside out. The things you are telling him are just a small portion of who you are, and he knows you. So all this lecture you are giving him to defend yourself concerning an issue, and you are pointing fingers to other people. And the Holy Spirit is saying, you have this problem. <coughs> you have this problem. But you are saying, these people, eh, these people, they have this much problem. They are the ones who are affecting me. We learn accusing, and we like accusing. In the process, we are grieving the Holy Spirit because he knows you inside out. He knows me inside out. Whatever I'm telling him, I'm, I'm hiding things he's already seeing. That by itself is a problem. That by itself is a problem. You know, with the children, they do hide and seek. <laughs> huh? You do hide and seek. So sometimes as a grown-up, you can uh, do the game with the children, and you are, you are doing like this, you are hiding, <laughs> 
and the child can pretend that he's, he's not seeing you. <laughs> because you are doing a game. We should never do, have a game with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he's seeing the whole of you, and you are describing a very small portion of you, which, is, which looks a bit better. And you think he's seeing you with that portion you are telling him. He's seeing the whole of you, and he's saying, no, 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 no. There is work that is needed to be done around you. So what, what, maybe what we are saying here, we need to break and not uh, parade ourselves with our goodness. We have no goodness anyway. Our righteousness is like filthy rags before God. It is his righteousness that matters. And his righteousness, you don't have it except it is, you are covered with it. So the Holy Spirit would want to work on us, help us to really acknowledge who we are when we have acknowledged who we are, then he can do the work. So that eventually we end up with the, with the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we are fully acceptable before God, our Father. So we frustrate him. Because the thing that you don't see or you, are not, you didn't go to the mirror in the morning, so the thing, the, the, the porridge and the toothpaste on your, on your, on, on your, on your face, you didn't see it. And you are saying how beautiful you are, and you didn't go to the mirror. <laughs> eh? You are talking about the, 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 the yesterday you. Eh? Who you were yesterday, because yesterday you went to the mirror, and you made sure that you are actually beautiful. So you are talking in terms of yesterday, but today you don't know what is on, what is on your face, because you did not go to check yourself with a mirror. So the Holy Spirit would want us to, to, to always have that mirror so that we, you can see ourselves. And I tell people, if you go to the mirror and you have porridge on your face, the hair is not done, plus, 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 whatever it is that is not appropriate on your face. And that is written on the screen, like we have the screen, it's written there. It's you who is like that. If you read that, that is called confession. Just think. You are reading what you are seeing on yourself. Huh? And you are, seeing, you, you are saying, I have porridge on my face. That's what is written there. I have toothpaste. My dress has uh, some tea that uh, got poured when I was taking tea. You are describing yourself. That is called confession. So the Holy Spirit rejoices when you confess. <laughs> he actually, it doesn't matter what you have done. We have just quoted David in the, other, in, the, in the other program. How he responded when he was told about murder, he murdered, how, and he became immoral. And he said, it's me, O oh Lord. That's my sin, O oh Lord. Forgive me. Immediately, forgiveness was pro uh, pronounced. So before the Holy Spirit we should be honest with ourselves. After all, who is, nobody is accusing you. If you go to the mirror, the, 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 the spirit of the mirror is that whatever is not appropriate, I'm going to address. That's why we go to the mirror. So, and then you cannot address what you have not seen. And you know it is the Holy Spirit that convicts us, convicts us as to sin. He's the one to show us that sin that you are covering. So when you are, you are willing to confess, when you are willing to be honest, then the Holy Spirit will show you everything that needs to be addressed. So he's going to wait for you to address. So that honesty before the Holy Spirit matters more than a lot of energy we put in many places, doing many things. Because you are so honest and you, you know the Holy Spirit, you cannot... Um, you, there's nothing you can do to make him dislike you. <laughs> all your dirt, all your mess, he will not stop liking you, but he wants you to say, I have a lot of mess. <laughs> Here it is. This is the mess. This is the mess. He will not dislike you. When you quote your mess, he's actually very happy because you are honest, because he can now do the work he's supposed to do in us. Praise the Lord. In uh, Psalm 51, verses 2 to 4, uh, we can read quickly, Psalm 
Psalm 51, verses 2 to 4. Again, it's, it's David. Verses 2 to 4. What he's saying concerning his mess, yeah? Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. That you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Let's stop there. So, so we are seeing David speaking it out. Speaking it out. He's not waiting for Nathan to tell him all the details. After all, Nathan was not there when he was doing these things. Nathan was, it was revealed to Nathan for the purpose of communicating. So he himself, David, is, is displaying himself and saying who he is before God. That's who I am. So have mercy upon me. Again, Luke chapter 15, verse 21. We can go there quickly. Luke chapter 15, 15 verse 21. And the son said to him, this is the prodigal son, Father, I have sinned against, against uh, heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So this young man, took everything he considered to be his inheritance. He went uh, and destroyed everything, consumed everything through prodigal living in a mess with women and so on and so on. And then he ended up in a mess because there was farming in the land where he went and he, w he looked for a job. The only job he could get is taking care of pigs and probably eating with them, probably living with them. But then while he was in that mess, he was able to judge himself. And he saw that he was not worthy to be called a son of his father. So when he's coming, and he has now come closer to the father, and in the meantime, the father has come, uh, has come running, embraced him, kissed him. But this son did not like, uh, like uh, embrace the embracing of his father before he said what he needed to say. Yes, he was embraced, he was kissed, but no, let me say what I'm saying. I'm saying, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. That changed everything. Remember, this is a parable, and it was given by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, it has a lot of meaning. That's how we are supposed to go before our God, our Father in heaven, appear before him and confess our mess. So the Holy Spirit loves you more, enjoys you more when you speak concerning what is not appropriate with a desire to get help, with a desire to be forgiven. We are dealing with honesty before the Holy Spirit. The moment we start hiding things, the moment we start feeling good that we are not as bad as the other one, nobody is comparing you. We are all different individuals with different callings, different anointings, and depending on your calling and your anointing, then you'll be judged accordingly. So this comparing us ourselves with other people, just forget it. You compare yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. And tell him, I'm not perfect yet, because I'm not sure that we, we, we are ever perfect with him. I'm not perfect yet. I need more panel beating. I need more panel beating. Sometimes why we have many issues is because something happened to our lives, and the doors of the temple opened up. I tell brethren, when a car rolls, you have an accident and the car rolls, one of the things that happen is that the doors fling open. One of the things, yes, if you are hit by a car, the shoes will run out. It's very common. But here we are talking about a car rolling. The doors open. If you leave that car in the bush for a little while, when you get back there after a few months, you are likely to find snakes inside. That's what happens to our lives. When things have happened and you are so wounded, you are so in pain, there are doors of your life that fling open. You have not done anything, have you? You have not done anything, but the doors of your, your life fling open. Then you have a foreign visitation. 
then that becomes the problem. You are still responsible to keep the doors closed. You are still responsible for that temple. It's not your temple. So, so sometimes that's what happens. So in that situation, we are very good in justifying ourselves. Lord, I've not done anything. It is other people who did. No, the house is still dirty. Yeah, the house is dirty. It's messed up. You are still responsible. Praise the Lord. So don't be afraid to admit lust and whatever else in his presence. Just say it. Say what is going on. Say what's going on. I had one case that came, and this young man was, was open, honest, very honest. And he needed help. And so he said, after Bible school, he was not able to do anything. He was employed by someone else to take care of his pigs. A colleague in Bible school. And the cows. Take care of the pigs and the cows. He told me, I go with them. You grown up. You, you interpret that. I go with those animals. I need help. I need help. <laughs> he's not able. And he knows it all. He has been to Bible school. He knows the scriptures. But he's not able to deal with the situation. Again, by the working of the Holy Spirit, we identified the real issue. The real issue. And he was able to get out of all that mess. And as we talk, he's the worship leader in his church. He has a, a music school, teaching instruments, keyboard, guitar. He bought a car. He got married. He got a child. He bought another car. And he's always in touch. This God of ours, you know, sometimes we can't even believe some, some things. We can't believe some things. So, being honest, the devil will not manage you if you are honest. Why? Because when you are you have a situation, there are issues, there are things going on around your life, and you are not able to deal with that. Something not so nice. Something not, not, not good. But you are not able to deal with it because there are circumstances that may make you be in a situation and you are not able to deal with it. You know it's bad, but you cannot stop it. Call it habit. When you surrender and you say, Lord, this is me. This is me. This is where I am. I need help. I need help. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is so happy with you. <laughs> He's so happy with you because you are not rendering him redundant. He has a job to do. Many times we make him redundant. And you know what? When the Holy Spirit is fully given his freedom and liberty, call it revival, the pastors who have no job, they will have no job. Why? The Holy Spirit can use any vessel. The Holy Spirit will do the healing himself. Even children touching people and they are healed. So he, he just wants the opportunity. He just wants a people to change and give him his position. And once we do that, then he will surely move. And I want to trust God that he's going to give us a revival. That. We are talking about being honest with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If we send a man of God or a woman of God to you, then... Even David was exposed to nothing. 
Yeah, it is Nathan who, is, who talked to David. So whichever way God does it, but let's make it our decision that, Lord, I will never cover up my mess. I will expose it and I will say it, but with the intention of getting help. That is the intention. So the Holy Spirit wants to have an honest people, honest people who will not cover up. The Holy Spirit is the only one capable of handling everything about you and still liking you. Everybody else, you tell them your story, you are in trouble. <laughs> they will start having an attitude towards you. They will start avoiding you because of, hey, that one, the, the, that one, that one. <laughs> That's the way we talk, that one. Everybody, all the other people who have that, even if they don't say anything, they, they will avoid you. They keep avoiding you. And you are wondering, what have I done? You told them the truth. <laughs> eh? You told them the truth. But you, when you tell the Holy Spirit the truth, he will still like you. He will still like you. He will not have an attitude towards you. That's the beauty with the Holy Spirit. You can trust him. You can trust the Holy Spirit. He will not have an attitude. And he will actually help you in the area, in the place where you are not able, because he came to us as a helper. He will help you in that situation without an attitude. So that's why my friend is so beautiful. He's so good. That's why I love him. And you know, again, he will tell you things to come. He will tell you what is ahead of you. He will even narrate to you your calling. Elsewhere, which we do not bring up here for this particular program, he is the one that declares our inheritance in, in, uh, through Christ in God. He is the executor. The executor is the one who declares and says this, the, the, the testator, the one who wrote the will, said, you are going to get this. I'm the legal person to say it. So the Holy Spirit is the one that declares our inheritance in God through Christ. He's the one to declare. So when he's speaking, and you are not honest, you are saying too many things. He's saying, for you to get this inheritance, you need to put yourself right <laughs> with your father. He will warn you. He will tell you. If you need the inheritance in God, you need to walk with your father in this manner. So that his work is not so difficult when it comes to declaring the inheritance. Yeah. Because you can give him a hard time. He wants to declare good things. But he's, he's bound by your actions and by your behavior. <laughs> and let me see, now that I have talked about inheritance, there are people who will be shocked with their, with their fathers. There are people who will be shocked because of the way you walked with your dad. When that, that will is opened and you discover that he has given you nothing. Or the people you thought that would be behind you, they are the, they are the ones ahead of you. <laughs> You'll be shocked. So for us to be sure of the inheritance, for us to be sure that we are getting what we have perceived as inheritance in God, we need to know our God well. <laughs> oh, yes. We need to know our God well. When we know him, we make adjustments so that we don't miss what is ours. We don't miss. The one to help us to make our position with our father proper or well is the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to be honest. That's why we have to speak to him honestly. 
When you go to a lawyer, he wants to know the whole truth. Sometimes we think lawyers just uh, twist things uh, uh, so that you can win. They do not necessarily twist things. They want to get facts right from you, from your perception. What happened? Tell me the way, exactly the way it happened. The, the lawyer will, will, will attempt to do that. But you are very careful because you don't know his heart. Eh? You are not sure <laughs> whether he can turn against you or he is going to say exactly what you told him. You are not sure of that. So, but why does he want to know the truth? He wants to know the truth that out of what you are imagining, he will tell you, no. You did not actually kill this man. You are defending yourself. If you say exactly what happened. So he's going to use the same information, put it from the legal perspective. So that although you told him the whole thing, I hit him twice. <laughs> and he died. <laughs> that is the whole truth. It's like you killed. You say no. The, the legally, I can convince the judge that you are defending yourself because of this and that and that. You, you are not seeing that yourself. You are not seeing that yourself. So the Holy Spirit wants to know the whole truth. <laughs> he wants to know the whole truth so that now he can present you before the Father with the understanding that there's nothing I'm hiding, but I'm helpless. And the, the Father will judge you accordingly. Praise the Lord. So we want to trust the Lord that we shall not be a people that keep things to ourselves, ourselves we are hiding things even before the holy spirit that is hindering revival everybody has a baggage which is secret to themselves and we are saying hi hi praise the lord praise the lord hey anointing and it is not anointing it's a good anointing we have learned many things with time we can create rain and there's no rain. <laughs> I think in films, they, they can create rain <laughs> and there's no rain. <laughs> there's no rain. So let's be honest before the Holy Spirit. We, we want to pause there so that uh, even the viewers can receive our prayer so that they can be honest. Let's pray for the viewers and everyone else so that uh, all of us can be honest before the Holy Spirit. Father, we, we come before you knowing that we are sinners, knowing that we have many things in our hearts which we hide from people, but we cannot hide these things from you because you see them, you know them. We are asking that you forgive us where we have tended to, to treat you like a man, like a woman. Lord, we are saying, you know all things. You know our lives. And we open our hearts to you, oh God, that you help us to correct ourselves. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.